Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 29 Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in the priests and the Levites, and gathered them together into the east street, and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites. Sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed, and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God, and have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs. Also they have shut up the doors of the porch, and put out the lamps, and have not burned incense, nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that ye should minister unto him, and burn incense. Then the Levites arose, Nahath the son of Amasai, and Joel the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, and of the sons of Merari, Kish the son of Abdi, and Azariah the son of Jehalalel, and of the Gershonites, Joah the son of Zimmah, and Eden the son of Joah, and of the sons of Eli Zaphon, Shimri, and Jeiel, and of the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah, and of the sons of Heman, Jehiel, and Shimei, and of the sons of Jeduthun, Shemaiah, and Uzziel. And they gathered their brethren, and sanctified themselves, and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord, to cleanse the house of the Lord. And the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into the brook Kidron. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify, and on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days. And in the sixteenth day of the first month they made an end. Then they went in to Hezekiah the king and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord and the altar of burnt offering with all the vessels thereof, and the showbread table with all the vessels thereof. Moreover, all the vessels which King Ahaz in his reign did cast away in his transgression have we prepared and sanctified, and behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. Then Hezekiah the king rose early, and gathered the rulers of the city, and went up to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bullocks, and seven rams, and seven lambs, and seven he-goats, for a sin offering for the kingdom, and for the sanctuary, and for Judah. And he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bullocks, and the priests received the blood, and sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, when they had killed the rams, they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. They killed also the lambs, and they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. And they brought forth the he-goats for the sin offering before the king and the congregation, and they laid their hands upon them. And the priests killed them, and they made reconciliation with their blood upon the altar to make an atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with psalteries, and with harps, according to the commandment of David, and of Gad the king's seer, and Nathan the prophet. For so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David, and the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David king of Israel. And all the congregation worshipped, 
and the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded, and all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had made an end of offering, the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. And they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now ye have consecrated yourselves unto the Lord, come near, and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of a free heart burnt offerings. And the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was threescore and ten bullocks, and hundred rams, and two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the consecrated things were six hundred oxen and three thousand sheep. But the priests were too few, so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Wherefore their brethren the Levites did help them till the work was ended, and until the other priests had sanctified themselves, for the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance, with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. And Hezekiah rejoiced, and all the people, that God had prepared the people. For the thing was done suddenly. Chapter 2 The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock, and hide thee in the dust, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver, and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks, and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? There is a place of quiet rest, near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us, who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. O friend of mine, may we see this opportunity as we read and listen to God's word 
as a time to draw near to the heart of God through the pages of the Holy Scriptures. Today we are focusing on Isaiah chapter 2 and the Second Chronicles chapter 29. I'm reading now Isaiah chapter 2 verse 11 and verse 12. The Bible says, The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Again, Isaiah chapter 2 verses 11 and 12 the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Today's message is entitled, A Day to Remember, A Day to Remember. Let us pray, dear God. May your Holy Spirit attend the proclamation of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. The Britannica Dictionary definition of bittersweet means having both bitter and sweet flavors. For example, one can speak of bittersweet chocolate. The definition for bittersweet could also mean in a figurative sense Combining sadness and happiness. Combining both sadness and happiness. For example, one can speak of a bittersweet story or a bittersweet memory. The event of the day of the Lord, as is mentioned in our text, is a bittersweet experience. The day of the Lord, as mentioned in our text, will be a bittersweet experience for the world. It will be bitter for some people and sweet for others. Now, in both the Old and New Testaments, the phrase day of the Lord and similar expressions denote the time when God intervenes in human affairs to execute judgment upon evildoers or to deliver his people from the hands of their oppressors or both. The day of divine visitation upon ancient Egypt and Babylon is spoken of as the day of the Lord upon these nations, but it is also a day when God promises to restore Israel. According to Jeremiah chapter 46 verse 10, Isaiah chapter 13 verses 6 and 9, the day of the Lord was also to be a day of judgment upon God's own people. Why? Because of their evil ways. The Babylonian captivity in particular was spoken of as the day of the Lord in Zephaniah 1 verse 7, 14 and 18 and Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 2. Isaiah in our text saw the professed people of God vaunting themselves and glorying in their own achievement. He also saw them humbled in the dust before the Creator in the great day of the Lord on account of their proud and unrepentant attitude. The expression day of the Lord also came to refer to the final day, the great final day, when God would subdue the heathen nations of the earth and establish his own people in their rightful dominion. According to Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 and 12, and Joel chapter 3 verse 14 and other Bible references. As a day of judgment upon evildoers, the day of the Lord is called a day of darkness, a day of darkness, dark because of divine wrath. Amos chapter 2 verse 18 to 20, Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 9, and Joel chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. And by the way, friend of mine, prophecies of a local day of the Lord on a particular nation are often also 
descriptive of the universal day of the Lord at the end of the world. We say that again. Prophecies of a local day of the Lord. Prophecies concerning judgment on a nation, for example. Prophecies of a local day of the Lord on a particular nation are often also descriptive of the universal day of the Lord at the end of the world. It's like when Jesus spoke of the destruction of Jerusalem, he blended predictions of the fall of Jerusalem with predictions concerning his second coming. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 24. Now, the New Testament writers likewise picture the day of the Lord as a day of wrath and a day of judgment. Matthew chapter 10 verse 15, the Romans chapter 2 verses 5 and 6. For example, Romans chapter 2 verses 5 and 6 highlight the point that the New Testament writers picture the day of the Lord as a day of wrath and the day of judgment. Romans 2 verses 5 and 6 says, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Friend of mine, in view of the fact that the affairs of earth will all come to a halt on the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord will therefore be the last day of this present world. And that day is variously called the great day, Jude 6. It is called that day, Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 4. Or it is simply called the day, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 13. For example, speaking of that great last day of this present world, the day of the Lord. Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 and 23 states, Many will say to me, in that day, Jesus speaking says, Many will say to me, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. O friend of mine, the day of the Lord is preeminently the day when the Lord Jesus Christ appears to summon the righteous from their graves, John 6, 39, to purge the earth with fire, 2 Peter 3, 7 to 12, and to establish his everlasting kingdom of righteousness. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 and verse 34. That is why 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 to 12 declares, But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserve unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hear the phrase again, but the day of the Lord, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. O oh, friend of mine, God wants the day of God not to be a bitter experience for us, but a sweet experience. We say that again. O oh, friend of mine, God wants the day of God not to be a bitter experience for us, but a sweet experience. 
So the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, it says, But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more then, much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath, from wrath on the day of the Lord. We shall be saved from wrath through him. If we come to him and be justified or pardoned, O oh, friend of mine, Jesus died and rose again to save us from the wrath of the day of the Lord. May we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior so that we will be delivered from the wrath of the day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus Christ. May the second coming of Jesus Christ be a sweet experience for us. O oh, friend of mine, it can be sweet if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and live for him. If you need to find the steps towards salvation, just look in the description under this presentation on YouTube and there, or if you find it on your phone and there you will see the steps to salvation. Oh, friend of mine, let us plan to be in heaven, to meet Jesus. Let us plan to be ready for that great day of God the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus we come again to you. Nothing in our hands we bring, but simply to your cross we cling. We pray, dear God, that you will help that when you come the second time, on that great day of the Lord, we shall be able to stand up and confidently declare, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. Bless that boy, that girl, that man, that woman, who put aside the time to hear your word. Be with those who are sharing it, Lord. And Father, we lift before you all those prayer requests, Lord. We are praying for this couple. They're courting and they so need your guidance, Lord. They need to know that they are following in the right path. The young lady wants to know whether she should respond to this young man. And they, they both want to know whether they are headed in the right direction. Whether they will make each other happy as a couple, a married couple. Father, Show them clearly whether they should proceed to marriage or not. You promise guidance, Lord, in Psalm 32, 8. Be the God who guides the good shepherd to them. Remember those who are sick, Lord. Bless the sister, Lord. Give her grace in spite of the pain. Arrest the deterioration of her body, Lord, and help that she would begin to mend, that she'll walk again and testify to the wonder-working power of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we pray that you will bless those who are reaching out to you at this time, those who need money for medications, those who need money for school fees, those who need money to put food on the table. We pray that you will be the God who provides. And Father, we thank you that we can come to you with all our cares and know that you are just a prayer away. Father, thank you for hearing and answering our prayer today. Thank you for reminding us to be ready for that great day of the Lord. Keep us in your love until we see you face to face in peace is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.